that every hero is well known as Spider-Man or Superman, there are hundreds of comic book characters you've probably never heard of. And there's a good reason for that. While comics can be a great medium for addressing sensitive issues, they also have a history of hosting characters that are so offensive or insensitive that many of them have been buried by their publishers. Some, however, linger on. Here are just a few of the most inappropriate comic characters ever created. Egg Fu. The cultural landscape was decidedly different when the villain Egg Fu was created back in 1965. First appearing in Wonder Woman number 157, Egg Fu hit every single Asian stereotype that could possibly be attributed to an egg-shaped bad guy. His face was a straight-up copy of a wartime propaganda poster, and he spoke in an accent that was straight out of a Charlie Chan parody. Looking at the comic with today's standards, um, let's just say there's some colourful language we don't use anymore. Is confusing. It, it is confusing. Say your damn pronouns. In his debut, Egg Fu was a Chinese communist agent who, for some unexplained reason, was the size of a house and shaped like an egg. He didn't have any real powers, was stuck in the ground, and actually briefly killed Wonder Woman. To make things especially weird, his mustache had the ability to whip and grab his enemies because, you know, he was an egg without actual arms, so what else is he gonna do? Throughout his publication history, he's been retconned and reimagined, and his weird relatives and robot duplicates have shown up, even in video games, but little could be done to mask his offensive beginnings. Not only is this character offensive to about 2 billion people on the planet, he's also offensive to eggs. That's gotta be a new low. Snowflame. On the surface, Snowflame is just this guy with super stamina, strength, and something called blast power, which is all because of the wonders of cocaine. Snowflame has only ever appeared in one comic, 1988's The New Guardians No. 2, during the height of bringing the war on drugs to kids and everything from comics to video games. So maybe a leader of a drug cartel gaining awesome superpowers from snorting cocaine wasn't the best idea. And it sounds like the solution is more cocaine. But hey, at least they tried. His career is incredibly short-lived once he gets thrown into an exploding shed during his first real fight. For most comic villains, this would be nothing but a flesh wound, but the drug-addled Snowflame never came back, except in really creepy fan comics. The New Guardian series was no stranger to bizarrely offensive characters either. The first issue featured Hemogoblin, a vampire created by neo-Nazis who went around spreading AIDS. They can't all be winners. Rawhide Kid When he was first created, Marvel's Rawhide Kid was just another comic book gunslinger who faded once Space Rangers came along and people weren't as interested in westerns anymore. So he mostly sat in a drawer for decades. When Marvel finally decided to do something new with the character in 2003, they changed only one aspect of him. They made him gay. While that's not necessarily an inappropriate move on its own, apparently the only way Marvel knew how to do that was to heap just about every stereotype on the character they could think of and make wiener jokes on his first cover. The second cover and shoehorn his entire tragic history into a single page. The most obvious alteration was his speech, which focused almost entirely on gossip, fashion, and innuendo with absolutely no subtlety. Have you got it? Yes. yes. Sounds like steam escaping. Ultimately, it added nothing to the character since he was already well established, having been printed off and on since 1955, no new backstory, no new anything, just more offensive to make cheap gay jokes for no good reason. Big Bertha It's hard to say whether or not Big Bertha is a commentary on the problems within the fashion industry or the social stigma of being overweight, because Bertha is representative of both extremes. She's a mutant who can transform her body into a 600 pound superhero, but she normally looks like a skinny supermodel. Now that's all fine though, because it's not her transformation from skinny to fat that's inappropriate. Rather, it's when she changes back from big to small when she literally pukes away the fat. 
Now, it should be mentioned that Big Bertha, as well as the rest of her teammates on the Great Lakes Avengers, are meant to be joke characters in the first place. But bulimia as a superpower is a screwed up message to send, and that's exactly what this character does. Even if you put a happy squirrel giving you positive messages in the corner of the page, Marvel could have done anything with her powers, but they went with the bulimic supermodel superhero idea instead. Ugh, bath. He, she. It's unlikely you've picked up a comic book and read about the misadventures of he, she. You know, the most fiendish killer of all time? The character only ever appeared in one comic book, 1943's Boy Comics No. 9. He, she is literally half man and half woman and somehow has the superpower of being able to stand in profile and perfectly mask one side of his slash her face, which is how he slash she uses her slash his powers, feminine seduction or mighty man strength against unwitting enemies. In he, she's one and only adventure, he cons a landlady into marrying him while his neatly placed fedora masks the villain's feminine features. When he she's peculiar nature is discovered by a uh, Mrs. He she, the bad guy goes into a blind rage and kills her, drags her downstairs and stuffs her body into a wall. The whole adventure ends up with a trip to the electric chair after the murder is caught by Crime Buster. The reasons for this character being inappropriate are pretty clear. It's not that the character was what we'd consider to be trans today. No, it's literally half of a man and half of a woman split lengthwise and stuck together to create what the comic book writers considered to be the world's worst monster. Worse than literal monsters. That's not how it works. That's not how any of this works. That and the comic describes anyone even remotely similar as circus freaks. Keep it classy, boy comics. Ugh. Hate manga. When you look like a KKK inductee whose hood got messed up in the wash, you're off to a bad start in many, many ways. Hate manga has been part of mainstream comics since he debuted in Fantastic Four number 21 in 1963, and his main weapon is something called a hatred ray. Can you guess what it does? <laughs> Seriously, one guess. And it doesn't play Smash Mouth songs at high volume, but it has the same effect. Give up? It makes you hate stuff. When he's first encountered by the Fantastic Four, Hate Monger is giving a speech about why he should be intolerant of foreigners. The thing doesn't like what he hears, so he smashes the guy's podium to smithereens. That's when the H-Ray comes out, and the members of the Fantastic Four immediately turn on each other. Well, more than usual. Eventually, the FF agree to continue the good fight even though they hate one another, and the whole thing comes to a hateful head when Hatemonger accidentally blasts his own goons, and they kill him. You'll never guess who's under the hood? Yep, it's Hitler. <laughs> or maybe just one of his duplicates. But the character didn't die there and then. He went on to build a supercomputer out of a bunch of old Nazi brains. His consciousness continued to transfer from one brain to another, prolonging the life of one of the worst human beings to have ever lived, eventually coming back as a being of pure energy in 2001. And even though he was made of pure light, he decided to keep the world's worst mustache. Thanks for watching. Click the grunge icon to subscribe to our YouTube channel. Plus, check out all this cool stuff we know you'll love too.